Welcome everyone, Chris Petra here. Thanks so much for coming by. We're going to do some fun um, uh, flower and leaf forms. We're kind of having the idea of let's practice a little bit of our um, uh, leaf forms and, and and things like this with uh, just a quick internet search. So I just went onto the internet and I looked up uh, leaf forms and then this picture came up and I just saved it to my phone. And basically you can kind of see there's all types of different leaf forms here on this uh, picture that I've um, just, you know, saved to my to my uh, iPhone. So I have an iPhone and I basically do a screen capture. Um, it's pretty simple to do. If you look up on YouTube, you can just click on uh, how to do a screen capture on your iPhone. And then you just type in whatever iPhone you have. You might have an iPhone 10, 11, 12, whatever it is. Or you might have a, a Samsung phone or some other whatever type of phone you have, you just type in on YouTube search, uh, how to do a screen capture and then type in your phone, your exact, uh, phone, um, uh, style that you have, whatever model number your phone is. And then that'll give you the how to on the iPhones. It's real simple. You just have to click the, um, top, uh, volume button. And then the, um, button here on the right hand side which is like the uh, close button for closing your phone and shutting your phone like uh, locking your screen so it's the lock screen button with the top volume button if you click both of those at the same time on any picture you have on your screen it does a screen capture or a screenshot and then you just go to your photos and it'll be in there in your photos file and your photos folder so it's kind of simple on an iphone i do this all the time um, when I'm doing artwork and trying to get some information where I want to kind of screen capture something that I found online on the internet. So this is your really a great, um, resource you have when you have your electronic devices, your cell phones, your iPads, your computers, you can do the same thing on your home computers, your, um, laptops, you know, iPads, whatever you have electronic devices, there's usually always a way to do what they call a screen capture or a screenshot. So you just have to look up how to do a screenshot or screen capture and you just, and then you just type in your a model number of your, you know, computer, your, um, iPhone, you know, if you have a Samsung phone, if you have other style phones or you have laptop computer or a desktop computer at home, all you have to do is just that simple, you know, look up on uh, YouTube and you'll, you'll have somebody there. There's probably a hundred videos on every, each each type of phone, each type of computer, you'll have a hundred videos on how to do a screen capture. It's real simple. That's the great thing about YouTube actually is there's always like just tremendous amounts of volumes of information on anything you can think about or anything you want to learn. You just go to YouTube and type it in and it's usually there and there's usually hundreds of videos on each thing you're interested in. So that's the great thing about YouTube. It's really helps you to kind of really accelerate your learning uh, as you, as you go. So that's that. So that's how I have this picture here. I did a screen capture of something I found on Google on a search. And um, this we have it right here. So what I'll do is we'll just start out and maybe we'll come up here and we'll, we'll start out with this first leaf form. And let's try it out. Let's take our pencil and maybe we'll just do a quick general idea of the shape of that. I'm not going to try to do a perfect um, drawing of that leaf form. I'm just going to try to get the, the basic of it. There we go. That's the basic shape of it right there. And then there's a, a stem in the middle, like a vein in the middle. And then there's some other veins that kind of go up like this on an angle. So I'm just going to get a few of those in there. I don't have to be exactly perfect, just like that. That's about how it looks. And then I'll just, it's very simple. I'm going to grab some, I'm going to get my paintbrush. I have a travel brush here. This happens to be a Da Vinci, um, a pure uh, Kalinske 1503, uh, Germany travel brush. It's got a good point on it and uh, it's a number eight size. So it's a number eight size. And this is the travel brushes where you can unscrew the top and then put the brush in the top portion of your brush like that and it's got a hole in the top and this way if you want to put this in your backpack your pocket your um duffel bag whatever it might be if you're out painting outdoors or on vacation or whatever it's perfect 
you can just use this brush anytime you want. Stow it in here. It's got the hole, which means that will dry the brush. So the brush will dry inside. And then anytime you want to get back to painting, you just take it out and put the handle back on. You screw the handle back on again, and now you have your brush. So I'm going to use this for my uh, painting here, my exercises here. So let's do these exercises together, these small compositions. So the first thing I'll do is let's just have some fun with it. Think about it this way. This is some of the fun practice exercises you're going to do before you maybe do a flower painting. So maybe you want to do a flower painting, a vase, some flowers, a still life with some fruit. Um, you know, maybe you're going, to, you're going to do something like a still life with flowers and so forth. This is a perfect type composition you can do before you uh, start that because this way you can kind of practice up on leaf forms. A lot of times our bouquets of flowers have lots of leaf forms in there. So let's kind of do that. Let's practice up on our leaf shapes. So I'll just take some of this. This is uh, sap green. And then maybe I'll take some olive green over here. And then maybe some uh, raw umber. Now, first thing I always mention is if you're ever creating your own YouTube videos, you'll always want to make sure you kind of tape down your palettes and your paper so that they don't move around. That looks awful um, distracting when you're trying to do a, a video and you're your palette's moving all around, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to tape down my palette right now. So I'm just taking a little bit of artist tape, drafting tape, and I'm just going to tape this down to my working table. And now it's secure, and now we can continue on here. So what I wanted to do was get a little bit of warm and cool, so that raw umber is kind of a warm... Um, golden color, golden brown color, and then we have our green, which is our sap green, and then a little bit of uh, olive green over here, and maybe let's say a little cerulean blue even too, like that. So let's get a little bit of different color variations, and then let's go right in, and we'll start with our brush pointing upwards like this. So if you just imagine, anytime you're painting leaf forms, you can always just take your brush and whatever way the leaf form happens to be, right now the leaf form is vertical, like this. So you can just take your brush and, you know, normally you might hold your brush like this, but if you see your leaf form is vertical, like this, you can just take your brush and spin your brush around like this with your hand. And then I always have my hand resting on the table here, on the paper. And then you can just take the brush and then you just, it almost, the brush almost is a perfect, um, shape to get your leaf form because you just have to have your point at the bottom and then you just press down on your brush and then you can have your leaf form just like that. And then you can go in and get a little more paint like that and do the same thing just like that. Then you can spin your brush around like this too. Since you have since you have the point of the brush like this at the top and that sort of, it pretty much matches perfectly the, the, the leaf form we just drew. You can do that. You can take your brush and just kind of do that. Touch it down onto your paper. And then before you know it, you have a perfect leaf form. Just like this. And you might be, you maybe tidy up your, um, the edges of your leaf form like that. And then you have your stem here. Like that. And there you go. Does that not look really good? That looks really good. We've got that really beautiful, nice shape here we see in the picture, in this photograph. And then let's do another one. Let's do this one here next to it. See how that will um, work out as we go along the... I'll leave some space in between these, as you can imagine. I think these are kind of really close together, so I'm not going to kind of as we're doing this composition here, we're working together and um, the thing I'm thinking of is let's leave some space in between each of these leaf forms, you know, because we want to have 
you know, a little bit of breathing room in between each, each exercise we're doing here, each, each leaf. So let's do this. Let's do maybe three across. So we'll do the second one here. Let's do that one in the middle. So we see here there's a bottom stem here. So I'm going to draw what I'm seeing. And this one is sort of more like an oval. Can you kind of see how that's more of an oval than this one's sort of like a, it's kind of like, um, it's sort of like an oval, but it's really a tight oval. This one's more of a, like a true ovalish oval type shape. So I'm going to do that. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we have the, the vein in the middle, like that. You can see the vein in the middle. And I don't think there's a lot of other veins other than this center vein here that I see. So we can kind of leave that center vein if we want. And then you can always take a... Uh, Okay, so let's let's work on this next. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in and kind of you can kind of see how I'm molding my brush right onto the paper, like that. I'll go back in again, get a little more sap green. This is sap green I'm using. And I'll do the same thing. I'll touch down the brush and go across the leaf form like that. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of a vein here in the center. You can sometimes do that. You can go along the center very, very carefully and try to leave a little bit of a a vein in the center there. And then maybe let's do a little bit of cobalt blue. Maybe some French ultramarine blue too. A little bit of maybe burnt umber. So we'll make a little bit of a dark here. A darker green. Sap green with a little bit of um, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber in it. Just to get a little bit of a darker. Like that. And I'll rinse my brush off and then come back over and get some more greens here. And you can see I'm doing the same thing here, touching my brush down and and then spinning my brush around this way too. And there we have it. We've done our second leaf and I think that looks pretty good. You could take a little French ultramarine blue and burnt umber, and you could add some darks in it here and there. If you see some darks, some darker tonal values in that um, leaf form, you can kind of add a few darker darks in there just to kind of give it a little bit of a bit of some light and shadow kind of effect there. And yeah, that looks good. And then we can also get a little more paint and then we can just do a stem here at the bottom. Like that. All right, <clears throat> now let's take our pencil again. So we'll do one more uh, pencil sketch here as we go across. And we're going to do this this third um, leaf form right here, right next to this one up here. And this one is even wider yet. So they're going from thinner to wider. So let's just kind of, there's a definitely a, a definite point in the top of this leaf here, this leaf form. 
and then it goes out like this. And then it goes out like so, and then it comes back in like so, like that. And then it has a stem here. Like this. Okay. And let's do the same thing again too. Let's get our brush. This is again a number eight travel brush by Da Vinci. It's a Kalinsky, pure Kalinsky uh, sable brush. And uh, we're going to do this leaf form over here, the third one over to the right. So we're just kind of keeping with the same format that we have here. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And then we're doing the same thing here. We're going to pick up more paint. The green, raw umber maybe in there a little bit. Like that. And let's start this one here and see how we do. Again, I'll take my brush and I'll hold my brush vertically like this. Seems to be a great way to start out. And then just kind of go like this. And then just sort of get the brush down and let it do its thing. Like that. And then you spin it around this way. So a lot of times you'll notice if you can take your brush and go vertically this way and then take it and go vertically this way, the opposite direction, you can get these really beautiful leaf forms like this. Pretty simple. Pretty simply like that. You know, just kind of doing that quick, that quick maneuver of just going vertical either way, either this way and then go this way too. And we can leave a little bit of that vein there in the center, like that. And we can come down here with the point of the brush and get that stem. Then we can go this way again. And I usually rest my um, I rest I rest my pinky usually on the paper. If I'm working like this, doing leaf forms, I usually just have my pinky and I rest it on the paper or on my board. I usually have always a, a board that's way larger than my paper. That's a big help. So if you're if you're working at home in your studio and you're thinking to yourself, how can I get an advantage painting? Um, if you're working on like a board like this, you know, on like a table or, a board, you know, a table or, you know, I usually use a board with a little bit of a pitch on it. So it's got a little bit of a tilt to it. So my painting surface always has a little bit of an angle, maybe like a 5%, 5 degree angle, 5% angle, 7 degree angle, kind of coming back towards me. So that, it, that if the paint starts to run, it's going to run this way down the page. So that's usually my papers pitched a little bit this way. I'm on a working table in my studio and this is my, my normal studio setup I always have. So I'm on a table and I have a large board that's way larger than my working area here that I'm doing right now with my paper. So if you can imagine my, my board's like two foot by three foot. So it's 24 inches by 36 inches across. So it's 24 inches high and 36 inches all the way across. And this way, whenever I put paper down on this board that I'm using and my palette, I always have tons of room where I can rest my hand up above, high up above where I'm working so that I always have a place that I can kind of stabilize my brush and my hand. And that's really a, a really big help. If you can kind of set up your, um, your, your table, whatever, however you're gonna work. I know some of you like to work on your lap. Some of you work on your kitchen table. Some of you work on stack trays. You know, some of you might work um, on easels, um, all kinds of different easels. Maybe some of you work vertically where your easel is almost straight up vertical. However you work, though, you want to try to have plenty of extra room where you can, you know, kind of like stabilize your, your hand and your brush um, on the outer perimeters of where you're working because that really is a big help. You can see the brush is kind of large here. And then when I go up here and I start to do this, I've got to go quite a bit up higher than my painting right here. And that's what I do. I have plenty of extra room up here that I'm actually resting my, if I can kind of zoom back a little bit, maybe I can kind of show you there. All right, so that's, there's even more board above here than what you can see right now. I'm zoomed all the way out. So, but you can kind of see how now I can do this. I can kind of rest my hand and my, uh, stabilize my hand and then I can do the, the brush work and have plenty of this area to kind of stabilize my hand as I go across this whole area doing the, the brush strokes as I'm working. And then down here on the bottom, it's the same thing too. I'm resting my hand on the paper and kind of stabilizing, stabilizing my hand, stabilizing my brush, 
and then I can just do these brush strokes pretty accurately because I'm really, my hand is actually really resting on the paper at all times, either up above or below or on the sides as I work. My hand is always resting on the paper. So I'm always stabilized. So this way my brush work is always pretty accurate. I can really get accurate brush work if I'm stabilized like this. So that's a kind of a, just a little tidbit of information as I, as I work here where I'm trying to kind of share how I do my, my painting so that you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And I'll do a couple veins across here. And sometimes you can go back in here and do a couple. As this is drying over here, you can do a couple. You can do a couple marks, you know, on the paper like that. And I think you have the feel of it. And this is really a lot of fun. So we're having a really good time here just focusing in on small compositions as we as we go. We're going to do more. We'll, let's do the next row here. Um, maybe we'll do two of these because we'll need a little more room here. These are a little bit these are a little bit wider. So let's draw two more of these leaf forms here. Let's do maybe we'll do this one and this one here, one and two here, and then we'll start another sheet of paper in a few minutes or so. So let's get let's get two more in. But I'm going to take a quick break first, and I'm hoping that you're really enjoying this video. Um, I'm hoping you're going to subscribe to my channel because we're here every week, week after week, month after month, year after year. We're always painting, creating new videos for you, and so I want you to make sure that you're always kind of in the in the mix here working with me and working with all of us getting your practice time in so whenever you're seeing my videos that's practice time that's when you're jumping in there picking up your brushes and your paint brushes and working along and you know what if you don't have the time or you're tired or if something comes up you have other obligations and you really can't uh, pick up your brushes and your paints and all of that not a problem just watch the videos because if you're watching you're learning that's the key to watercolor if you can always keep your mind on either watching or if you're practicing that's even better yet you're drawing and you're practicing painting and drawing perfect but if you can't always get to doing the drawing and the painting on the video videos that i'm creating uh each uh, week as we go and each month you know each month as we're going and progressing through all of these videos and tutorials no worries if you're just watching it you're going to learn something by just watching because it's going to go into your mind your mind's going to kind of like uh it's going to kind of simmer in your mind what you're seeing and that is going to translate into when the next time you go and pick up your brushes and your paints and your paper and your pencil or your pen, whatever you're doing, you're going to sort of remember that. It's going to be in your mind, kind of fresh in your mind and you're going to tend to kind of refer back to that in, in your uh, memory. So whenever you're watching a video, you're memorizing it as you're watching it. And then when you go back in and you start working again, maybe again, you can't always paint and draw every time we get together. But if, at least if you're watching, you're going to learn what we're doing by watching and you're going to memorize it. And so I always say video watching is crucial. I did a ton of video watching and I still do a lot of video watching DVDs, YouTube videos. I'm always watching videos to learn because even if I'm too busy or tired or whatever it is, at least if I'm watching something, I'm going to be learning. It's going to be imprinted in my memory. And that's the main thing I want you to know is, again, if you can't get to maybe actually doing the painting or the pencil drawings, if you're watching, you're going to learn that way as well. It's a very powerful learning tool, watching. All great um, sports athletes and um, people that are um, uh, musicians, they all watch videos and they try to really, really carefully um, hone in on what the other sports team is doing or they're watching videos of themselves and they're trying to see how they can do better by watching the video of themselves on tape, like sports athletes. They're always watching videos. I know that for football, baseball, people that play tennis, all the sports that you watch, hockey, all, all major sports, they all watch videos all the time to learn to correct things that might be problems. So trust me, if you're watching our videos here on my channel, you're going to be really ahead of the game. And that's why I say, if you can subscribe on the right hand below, at least you'll be alerted when I make a new video. And then when we're, you know, you can watch the video as we go 
And again, you don't always have to be painting and drawing each time we get together. But if you're watching, you're way ahead of the game. You'll be learning more, absorbing more, and you'll ab absolutely be um, definitely um, uh, ahead of the game. And you definitely will be learning and it'll be affecting in a positive fashion your painting and your drawing. That's without question. It's a proven fact. Okay, so let me take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to start on these two over here, these two leaf forms here. This one here and this one here, these two. We'll put them right here. And we'll get right back to business in just a second. All right, so we're going to get back here and start working on these next two leaf forms. Let me zoom back in again. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to, again, start with this one. And I'm noticing right away, I'm going to kind of look at this and say, well, how many leaf uh, leaves, actual individual leaves are uh, in this leaf form? And I'm kind of, I see seven. So we have the, the one that's in the center. That's kind of perfectly vertical, pretty much, you know, straight vertical. And then you have three on each side of that vertical leaf form there. So let's do the first one, the, the completely vertical leaf form that goes straight vertical. And then I'm going to try to divide it. So I'm just going to kind of make a light pencil line here just to kind of say, all right, this one we'll do over here and then we'll do this one over here. And then I notice too that this one's a little more narrow. So let me, let me erase that line and we can go a little bit wider over here for more room and this one's a little thinner so we can kind of keep it thinner over here. So we'll have more room over here and then I'll do this over here. So I'm going to take this one and start here and I can kind of see there's a point on that leaf form in the center there and I'm just going to kind of go right around here like so and this one kind of goes in like that. Somewhat like that. Then we have the next leaf form here to the right. The point of that leaf form is not quite as high as this one here. And it comes in like so. And then this one here comes out and it goes like this. It's a little bit smaller here, like so. And then there's one more leaf form down here, like that. Kind of goes down like that and it comes in like that. So that looks pretty good and then this, like that. And I'm hoping you can see this. Let me go a little bit darker right now. So let me just take the pencil line and go right around a little darker. So you can kind of see the, the pencil line a little bit darker. You can kind of see what I'm drawing here. Like that. And then I'm going to go to the left here and start working over this way. The next leaf form over here is like this. Comes in like that. And then the next one here comes in like that. And then this one here is a little bit uh, like this. And I think that looks pretty good. That is essentially what we're seeing here. Now, um, for this leaf form, I'm not going to try to get in the um, every one of those st um, veins that you see. So you can kind of maybe see that there's veins in each one of these leaves here. I'm not going to do that in particular. I'm just going to try to get the basic shapes of each of these as we go. Okay, and we're just going to mix it up with the colors. Green, greens, raw umber, sap green. And again, I'm doing the same thing. Spin my, my brush vertical, make sure these are dry, 
So before you start working on this leaf form here, you take a break, you blow dry this, or you make sure it's 100% dry, so you might want to wait an, a half an hour maybe. So you always want to remember when you're working with watercolors, one of the big advantages, a little tidbit of information, I hope you'll, um, don't mind that I just take a little quick, uh, you know, sidebar here. A big thing with watercolor when you're working on your paper is you want to kind of monitor what parts of your paper are still wet that you've been working on. Because um, when you're working on your watercolor, sometimes you're going to need to rest your hand or your pinky as you're working. And you have to be careful not to lean into the wet paint. So it's always good to kind of monitor your other washes that you have on your paper. And then you say to yourself, hmm, maybe I need to let this dry a little bit and then I'll come back in and start working again. So that's where breaks do come in handy. I, I do. That's why I do take breaks a lot because I let areas dry and that gives me an advantage so that when I come back in and I start painting again, I'm way less likely to lean into my paint and start um, putting my hand into wet paint. So if I let my paint dry as I go, maybe every 15, 20 minutes I take a break, I let the paper and the paint dry a little bit, I'm way better off. So that's why I kind of mentioned that. It's a real, kind of a very important point, but a lot of people maybe don't mention it all that often. But I, I did want to mention that little tidbit of information. And then again, too, again, I'm going to take my brush and go vertical. And then just take my brush and kind of do this. Like that. So I want to have my brush vertical this way with the point up vertically. And then I'll come back around this way pick up more paint and again I can rest my hand or my pinky onto this paper up here because this is dry these are all dry now these leaf forms so I can just go right up here and rest my hand up there and I don't have to worry about it and then we just go right around here then I go do the same thing I spin my brush around the other way vertical this way with the point of the brush going uh, vertical upwards so and I can just do that I can sort of get my my washes in like that and this brush has a good point, as you can see. So you want to try to have a brush that has a good point. If you're doing especially these kind of leaf forms, you, you need a brush that has a good point on it. Um, so that's something where you might have to maybe save a brush that has a good point on it for when you're doing leaf forms. Not, not always do you need a, a, a very pointy tip on your brush, but for these type of leaf forms you do need a, a good point on there or you can also maybe have a I like to always use my um, needle point brush that I have here so you can see how this needle point brush has a really really super sharp point I can rinse that brush off pick up some paint and then you can get some really beautiful sharp points there so in essence you can always use your needle point brush to get in some beautiful sharp points on your um, paintings Let me see if I can get this phone back. There we go. Okay. So, again. You can also spin your brush around this way. And do this. Spin your brush around all the way, like that. You can pick up some cerulean blue there with your green. Make a darker bit of wash down here at the bottom of your leaf form if you want. Like this. Many times I rinse off my brush in the water pail, water bucket, container, water container, and then I dry off some of that water on the tissue or paper towel. Then I can go in and take some paint and use a damp brush and just kind of smooth out the paint with a damp brush and that really works good. And as you're doing your exercises, don't feel, add a couple splashes here and there.
and look at what we have. Some really nice leaf forms here. And again, you'll always encounter these when you're doing your flower paintings or you're doing some outdoor work where you want to have some, uh, maybe some foreground with, with uh, bushes, leaf forms, things like that. These come in really handy. So if you practice these a few times here and there, you'll be, be way better off because the next time you encounter some vegetation and things like that in your paintings, no matter where you're painting or what you're painting, if you do have some, again, paintings with flowers or um, if you're outdoors doing landscapes, things like that, you're going to see these, these type of leaf forms as you go. And you'll already be ahead of the um, process here by... practicing up on these. All right, so there we go. That's another gorgeous leaf form here. All right, let's do this. Let's take another quick break, and then we'll do one more over here on this side here, and I think that'll be it. So we've been practicing now for about the last 15, 20 minutes, almost half an hour on our leaf forms, and this is just a perfect, you know, um, compositional type tutorial where we can practice up on some leaf forms and just enjoy it. It's not too stressful. We're not trying to create a beautiful painting or anything like that. We're just, get, you know, getting in and doing the real nitty-gritty um, practice work that we need to do as watercolor artists so that whenever we encounter, again, type paintings with uh, landscape paintings, um, floral paintings, still life paintings, things like that, you will be um, already practiced up and you'll also have this for your reference material. So once you're done with this painting, and you've done this exercise, you'll take this and you put it in a folder. You might label the folder like uh, flowers or even leaf forms or leaf, uh, you know, or vegetation, anything, anything you want to. You're the artist. You're going to come up with some folders and you put some things together. And when you're doing an exercise like this, once you're done, you put it in the folder once it dries and then you can always refer back to it. And then you'll, if you're doing like a, a landscape painting or some flower paintings or some still life paintings, you can grab your folder that says, you know, leaf forms or vegetation or flowers, whatever it is. And you grab that and you can just leaf through your paintings that you've done, these exercises. And you'll have this as your um, little bit of a guide, a little bit of a quick study. You'll go, you'll say, oh, I remember doing this. Yeah, I remember doing this study here. We, we practiced and we remember we were talking about the brush and how to use the brush going vertical either way. And, you know, getting in the washes and you know, using the the greens and the, you know, the different colors we use, you know, we used some warm and cool colors. We use the greens and we also use some raw umber to get some of that golden warm color in there. So you'll remember all those things as you go through your files and maybe have a little folder and you, when you take your folder out, you're going to remember all the things you did. You can even put notes on this if you want. You can draw a pencil in some notes. Maybe the colors that we use, you can pencil in the colors that were used. And, and things like that. So it really is helpful. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm excited. We're going to do one more leaf form right here, and then that'll be it. We'll, we'll actually be, uh, we'll have a, a, a really, a, you know, let's see, one, two, three, four. We'll have five beautiful um, compositions here that we did, beautiful leaf forms that you'll have uh, going forward to um, have for yourself um, to reference when you need to. Okay, all right, we'll be right back. All right, so we're back again, and we're going to actually finish up with our last leaf form here. Let's get going. This one is a little different than the rest, actually. This one is, um, they're all unique, actually, unto themselves. But this one here, I find, is a little bit different than the rest. Anyway, um, let's do this. Let's kind of start up here at the top. Okay, like that, and then over here, we'll go up a little bit like this, down like that. This one goes over like this, and then this one goes over here like this, and I think that's good. 
And this one has a vein here. And there's some veins that go this way too, vertical. Maybe I'll try to just leave a white bit of paper along the center vein here, this way vertically. And let's go right over here. We'll go right back into our paints that we've been working with. The sap green, cerulean blue, sap green here in the center, and then a little bit of raw umber over here. And then we'll come over here, we'll do this. Maybe we'll even add in a little bit of um, cadmium lemon yellow over here toward the top. And again, I'm leaving my, my brush vertical like this because these are sort of pointy. These por portions of the leaf here are kind of pointy, so it just makes sense to kind of keep the brush in this position here like that going north like you know uh, vertical like this and then we'll just do some this here you can go the other way you can and then again I'll do the same thing keep my brush kind of going the way of the points of the the leaf forms here like that like this And we'll just get that stem here at the bottom, like that. And it does look like the top portion of this is a bit darker, so maybe let's get some um, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue, and let's, why not, let's make this darker up here. And I'll keep the point of my brush again pointing upwards like this. And I can always rinse off the brush, take a little bit of water off the brush once I rinse it off, and then I can always lift up a little bit of paint if I want to just lighten these areas up a little bit and I don't want as much paint on there, you can always do that. You can lift up a little bit of paint, like that. And I'll just erase this center line here. I'm always very careful though when I erase, if I'm ever going in to erase anything on a, on my watercolor paintings, I always am very extremely careful because many times I've gone in to erase something and I really made some really um, unpleasant looking marks on my paper because I maybe touched a bit of the watercolor painting while it was still damp or wet with an eraser. So I always mention that probably best thing to do is the only time you would really go in to do any erasing on your watercolor paper is if it's completely dry 100% or if in this case here you just see I have a ton of room where there's all this white paper. Then I can go in and erase a little bit, that's fine, right? But I would never go in with an eraser and do anything near any kind of washes that are damp, wet, or even, even slightly damp. I would, the only time I would go in with an eraser on a watercolor painting is if it's 100% dry, like I mean two days dry or one day dry or if it's been, you know, we use the blow dryer and we, you know, use the blow dryer for like five or ten minutes on the painting and it's 100% dry. Because I've, again, I've done that a couple of times here and there over the years using a, an eraser, trying to erase a pencil line and I wind up smudging something and it looks really terrible. And then I ruin a painting. I've ruined paintings doing that, you know. So always a good thing to keep in mind. Just a little tidbit of information. And in any case, we've had a lot of fun here. Thanks so much for coming by. Again, I always mention, if you haven't subscribed on the right-hand side below, you hit the subscribe button. This way you're kind of sticking with me here. We're working, you know, week after week, month after month, year after year together. 
you're soaking in all the information that you need to get better at your watercolors. And I know all of you are really making a lot of progress and I give you a good salute for that. I know most all of you are really having good results. I see all of you telling me in the comments section, things are going good. I had really good results on this painting. I did a, it came out really well. I, I'm always hearing positive comments in the comment section. So thank you for leaving those comments. Now I know uh, without any doubt that everyone is making good progress. And over the years, everyone has always left me good comments saying that they really are, you know, m making good uh, progress with their paintings uh, as we go. So that's my main priority is that you're making good progress. And if you have any questions, of course, you leave comments in the comments section. Just say, oh, you know what? I have a question about this or that. Leave a question. And a lot of times, too, a lot of people here in my uh, on my channel, many of you are experienced watercolor artists for many years. So you have great comments, too, to add into the mix. And people will learn from your um, information, too, as well when you leave comments. I know many of you leave comments a lot of times, um, uh, kind of like general comments of how you're doing things and how they work for you. And a lot of people pick up on those and are reading those and they're benefiting from it. So, you know, when you're leaving comments again, that are, you know, uh, insightful people that are here on this, we're all working together. People are reading those comments and they're learning from them too. And they're using your comments and your ex experiences too towards their watercolor painting. So, I don't have all the answers and uh, there's a lot of people out there that have some great comments too. Again, like I said, everyone is chipping in here. We're all together. We're, you know, kind of moving along together forward. And uh, again, thanks again for coming by, watching this video. Um, let's have fun as we go. Enjoy the watercolor journey, of course, always enjoy the fun of it. It's just getting together constantly on a weekly uh, basis practicing and we're all getting better and improving on our watercolors as we go, um, you know, month after month and year after year. So uh, stick with it here. Stick with me. Stick with all of us here. We're all having a fun time and we'll see you on the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.